Hi everyone, how you doing? Um, I'm doing a video of the day. <coughs> There's the horseback. Uh, I'm doing a video of the day, which I've done before, and I just thought I would do it again. Um, it's basically um, how long does a heart stent last? And I know I've done life expectancy, and uh, well, basically the lifespan of a heart, uh, well, a stent really, you know. Uh, basically, there's two types of stent. There's the bare metal stent, and there's the uh, drug eluding stent, which is what I got put in in 2008. One stent, right? Don't be fooled by the, the two fingers, it's just a bad habit of mine. One stent, right? It was put in 13 years ago, so I'm now getting into my 14th year with my stent. So I beat quite a lot of stats. I'm sure a lot of years have been Googling. If you've just come out of hospital, if you've had a stent, uh, fair play, hope you're doing well. Uh, don't be believing half the crap that you'll see in Google because it's not true. But some of it's true if you sort of, if you're stupid and you don't abide by the rules. Um, firstly, I'm not a doctor, right? People have actually watched my videos and they've left a comment saying things like, uh, um, I, I'm not really going to listen to you because you're not a doctor, right? That's fair enough, but I've had a heart attack. I've had a stand in for 14 years. Uh, I've watched umpteen videos about stents. I've read so many books about heart surgery, stents, heart disease. Uh, I basically say that there's nothing I do not know about the heart and about stents. So you can listen to me, or you don't listen to me. You can listen to your doctor, you know. I phoned the doctor there last week. I was asking for uh, a calcium scan uh, that tests your score as to um, what the calcium is in the plaque lining of your body. If it's a very high score, then you have a very high risk of your of a heart attack. You know, uh, if you have a very low score, you know, then you're um, you're doing really good. But my doctor didn't even know what it was. So, if you're on Facebook and you're one of the women that leave me comments, then you shouldn't be uh, leaving comments because you're not a doctor, or you shouldn't be making videos because you're not a doctor. Uh, get my doctor a ring because he doesn't even know what a, scal a calcium scan is. Uh, plus the fact when I went to him about my jaw pain two months before my heart attack, he told me I had neuralgia. You know, I'm telling you now, if you have bad jaw pain uh, continuously, uh, Go and get a treadmill test or a stress test, all right? Uh, you can watch one of my old videos. It actually tells you about it. But anyway, I'm waffling on. Uh, today's video is uh, how long does a stent last? You've maybe come out of hospital and you've sort of read things and you've got worried. And uh, who can blame you? There's so much stuff out there that scares the crap out of you. And if you've got a young family or sort of a teenage family, you're sort of thinking, God, am I going to see them grow up? Uh, yeah, yeah, you are. Today's technology is fantastic. Uh, the stents are better, and I read a thing that there's new stents coming out uh, that actually uh, self dissolve within three years. So, if they dissolve within three years, that proves the point because there's a lot of people that actually say, you know, you, a lot of people get stented that don't need to be stented. What should have just been done was the fact that the clot should have been busted and no stent put in. So. You know, there's a lot of theory behind that. Um, this guy left me a comment, I think his name was Ray, and uh, he had a heart attack, uh, not in November there, I think it was in November before, and his blood pressure was like 160 over, I think it was, was it 90 or 100 he told me, but he's brought it right down to good normal levels. He's lost a stone and a half. He goes for a seven to 10 mile walk every day. Now, Ray is obviously a fit guy. Nobody's asking you to do that, you know. But what I'm saying is a 30-minute walk every day is perfect. But I'm, I, I always do this thing where I start talking and I just can't shut up. I want to go back to the stents because I'll give you a fax first, right? The fact of the matter is they say that 40% of people that get stents will have to get another stent within five years. And there is a good sort of majority of people that would die within the first five years. Now, when I had my stent put in, I was uh, only 53. And 
I know what you're thinking. You're looking at me and saying you only look 53 now. How could that have been 13, 14 years ago? What can I say, you know? I'm a young looking boy, you know, and I, I try to keep myself fit. But anyway, uh, what am I saying? Who am I? Where am I? Yes, I'm in the hospital, right? And uh, I've just had my stent and uh, I'm thinking, uh, God, I nearly died. <laughs> You know, my, uh, I nearly sort of got, I nearly left this world, but I didn't, right? So as soon as I got out of the hospital, I was waiting on my letter to go to the rehab. And I thought, uh, it's just one of the worst things out, Google. See, Google, you know, unless, unless you know things and you're good at figuring things out, stay away from Google. It's not for you, right? Google will turn around and it'll tell you in the first year, right? You're on Plavax the first year. Plavax is a nightmare drug. It makes you bleed like a oh, bad, bad drug. But you have to take it to stop any uh, plaque and whatnot, uh, coating the uh, stent, right? But a lot of people have to get re-stented within the first six months to a year. Now, that's a fact. So it is, I know Ray was talking about it in his comment, saying that a lot of people, you know, there's people he knows that have uh, had a stent and they're still going strong 20 years later. Um, without getting a stent and that's fair play that's true Ray very very true but uh, these are people that are actually following the rules and people that are probably in their 40s and 50s um, when I was in the ward I was 53 and uh, I was actually very young compared to some of the people that were there and some of the people that were actually there they had problems prior to that it wasn't the first time they were in getting stented they were sort of in for their second stent there was a guy that sort of had like cancer operation a year or two beforehand so they all had sort of like you know problems as it was and plus the fact I was only 53 and uh, most of the patients that were in the ward were sort of like late 50s 60 but a lot of them were sort of you know 70s and 80s you know and uh, when you say, just say, let's just say a hundred, I was in the hospital with a hundred people, right? And out of those hundred people, uh, 20 of them were my age, right? And the other 80 were in their 70s and 80s, right? So you're reading the stats that 40% of people are going to have to get a stent within five years, right? Now, that's four out of ten. Clever, aren't I? I tell you, I'm good with figures. Nothing beats it. So four out of ten, right? So when you look at the number of old people, they're actually being included in those stats. So if you're sort of in your fifties and you've got a teen family or something like that there and you're worried, you know, a lot of these stats, it's like I've discovered it with COVID, you know? It used to be every night in COVID it would have come on the TV you know, 200 people died. And I remember in Belfast, in Belfast it wasn't so bad. Uh, it used to be, oh, 19 people died today, 19 people. But they don't tell you the bloody age of the people. They don't give you the true stats. Uh, Belfast Live, which is an online uh, newspaper, basically, for Northern Ireland, they broke it down one time. And I think it was like 2,000 deaths in Northern Ireland, right? 2,000 deaths. Now, three, three of those 2,000 deaths were people under 40, right? And they were under land conditions. Three under the age of 40. Now, what's that tell you? What's that tell you? The older people die. Now, this isn't a new thing. And if you're sort of 80 and so on and you're watching this channel, fair play to you. You know, it's good to see you're on the internet at your age. But, I mean... I'm coming, I'm not coming, I am 67, right? Now, I know come 13 years' time, if I'm still living, I'll know that whenever I'm in my 80s, that there'll be more chance of me sort of dying of a heart attack than somebody aged 53. It's, it stands the reason, you know, it really does. So if you're reading the stats about, you know, how many people die that have got a stent within the first five years, you know, it's including the 80-year-olds, 90-year-olds, they're all thrown in there, you know, it's like the COVID. It's like the COVID figures. They're not true figures. You know, they want to base it down. What they should do is instead of saying, uh, oh, one in five people, 
you know, within the first year of having a stent would have to be re-stented. I think she'd be saying that. You know, what they should be saying is one person over the age of 80, uh, two people over the age of 90. Yeah, stop the gut, you know. Stop scaring the shit out of people. It doesn't need to be done. I'll tell you something now about a stent. There's a guy who got a stent in 1977. He's still alive. Still alive. You know, so there you are, Ray. The guy you knew was 20 years. There's a guy who got a stent in 1977 and he's still alive. And technology wasn't as good back then. The drug eluding stents are really good things. And uh, it's not even just the stents. The stents are not really that important. Once you get the stent, you know, what is more important is the person to put the stent in. It's as simple as that. You know, I've seen buggers and they still continue smoking, puffing away, you know. Nothing worse than bloody smoking, you know. Or you see them, you know. Can of Coca-Cola. I, I don't even call it a can of Coca-Cola, you know. It's it's just a third bottle. You know, two of it's got Coke, the, the other third's sugar. You know, I had to laugh whenever Ronaldo was being interviewed and they actually put a Coca-Cola tin near him and Ronaldo just pushed it out of the road. That's one thing about Ronaldo. He's very dedicated to his food and he knows all about fitness. Did you know that Ronaldo only eats the same meal over and over again? And that is chicken, broccoli and rice. Now that's what you call dedication. And after you have a heart attack, that's what you have to have. Dedication. As Ray says, you have to get off with your bum every day. The Heart Foundation, they say that you should uh, exercise at least 30 minutes a day for 7 days a week. But basically they say 150 minutes a week. But I mean, Christ's sake, if you can't do 30 minutes exercise a week and you're my age at 67, if I, see, if I couldn't do 30 minutes uh, exercise a day, there's something bloody wrong with me, you know? Uh, basically it would be, you're a lazy shite. Simple as that, you know? So, you know, get up and exercise. Don't just exercise, but, you know, whenever Ray's out his walk, I'm sure Ray's doing a brisk walk. He's not just standing around as if he's out for a Sunday sort of, you know, it's going to be vigorous, you know. I myself, I exercise on the uh, stepper. Oh, have you ever tried a stepper? Stepper's hard work. Gets out bad by pumping like anything. I go on the stepper and I use the rolling machine. The rolling machine as well. It's got three things on it that you attach. I've got the stage now where I have all three. And I'm sort of pulling back. I'm exercising the heart. But, you know, get, get yourself a fit watch. By the way, I'm definitely going to I keep saying it. I'm definitely going to do a video on the uh, Fitbit watch. It's got absolutely everything that you need, including, you know, it tells you your heart rate, stuff like that there. And it actually tells your... Uh, uh, hands up if you know what HVR is. You don't, do you? It's your heart variable rate. And uh, you take it at night. And it, it's at a very low level. It actually is... It's another, like it's like the calcium. It's a... It's, and it's sort of signifies that you have a good chance of having a heart attack. It's built into the Fitbit watch. There's so much built into the Fitbit watch and uh, I would very, very recommend getting one because it shows you in a day uh, how many hours or miles of cardio walk you did. You know, you'll do certain exercise and it's just basic exercise. You've got to do the cardio exercise and you're all asking me what's that got to do with a stent and how long does a stent last? It's got everything to do, you know. It's the same with your diet. You know, you've got to eat certain food and stuff like that there. You've got to take your medication, certain medications to sort of make sure that the plaque, that the blood flows, stuff like that there. Dehydration. You've got to make sure you take water so many times a day. Water is very important. People don't realize that. They prefer alcohol. You know, you take a glass of water before you go to bed at night. It makes sure that your blood isn't too thick. Uh, you'll not take a heart attack in your sleep. For what? Just taking water? How simple is that? All these things keep your stent and your heart clear your arteries you know the stent is not the thing the main thing after you get a stent is yourself and what you're going to do afterwards you have got to make sure that you change everything in your lifestyle you know if you've been taking sort of like hamburger i mean you you see my work there's two there's two there's two guys put up with like food vans you'd call them you know these guys will never they're like undertakers they'll never go bust there'll always be people dying and there'll always be people feeding their faces that's a fact you know i mean in my work there's people sort of the van pulls up at about 10 o'clock 
and they all go run night, you know. And they buy a bab. Me, I make my lunch, or I would sort of have something small, like a uh, cereal or something like that. There, never eat anything big at lunchtime or for breakfast. But there are seven big bloody babs, not just an ordinary bab, a big fucking one foot. I said fucking there, but I didn't say. I didn't say the swear word, you know. I was I was going to, but I didn't, you know. But the babs about that size, it's a foot long. It's the same when you go into Subway and somebody buys a foot long. I was waiting in a queue to get something for uh, my grandson. It was just like a wee egg, and, or not a wee egg, sorry, a wee sausage and bacon. And this guy's getting a Subway and he's getting meat thrown in it, he's getting this thrown in it, he's getting eggs thrown in it. And I'm sort of looking at him and he's just, he's about three times my weight. I'm sort of saying, mate, you're a walking heart, you're a walking heart attack. And you're going to shove that in me and I sort of say, it's only lunchtime, mate. What the hell are you going to have for your dinner? You know, cut down on what you eat, right? You know, if you're eating a lot of food, you know, you don't eat much for breakfast, right? The best way to start breakfast is with like fruit or something like that there. And cut out all the chocolate and crap like that there. You don't need to eat this and crisp. You don't need to eat crisp and then have something big. You know, I've, I've seen people eating more than I eat from a dinner at five o'clock for their lunch and work. You know, like seriously, like you're a heart attack waiting to happen. You might not have the heart attack now, but trust me, when you're in your 60s, you're going to have that heart attack. Um, another thing about uh, taking an old nursing home and you've got all the old people in it, you know, you look around, you see mainly women. You don't see a lot of men. Well, you see men, but not a lot, not a lot of men, you know, mostly women. And they're usually thin women, you know. So that's, what's that tell you, you know? Go out for a walk and I dander about, right? And uh, take a note of the old people you see, right? And put a wee tick, male, female, thin, fat, thin. No, it's not going to be on your list if they're aged about 85, 86. Fat. Fat. There are not many fat people that reach well into the 80s and 90s. The BMI is a teller, the old teller. And that there is another thing about your stent and your heart in general. Overweight people do not live long and if you're fat and you're watching this don't be ashamed you know look at that i've been complacent uh with lockdown i put on two stone i've become a big fat slob but i intend to do something about it because if i don't do something about it 100 percent, i am gonna end up back in hospital that's a fact you know heart disease and obesity heart disease takes no prisoners it just wipes all the obese out that's a fact it really is a fact. People can turn around and say, Oh, but I know such and such. And such. So, so, and what? Obesity is not good for heart disease. Smoking is not good for heart disease. Bad diet, eating too much crap is not good. And too much alcohol is not good. Dehydration is not good because it puts up your blood pressure. It also puts up your heart rate. That is a fact. And uh, I'll tell you what you can do. If you have a smartwatch don't drink water for about four or five hours and see how high your heart rate goes up and test your blood pressure your blood pressure will go up and then uh, drink a couple of glasses of water and then test your blood pressure an hour later it'll come down just like that now you're wondering why i'm saying all this and uh, how long a stent lasts all those factors are what makes your stent last you've got to do all those things to ensure that the build up of plaque does not happen because that is uh, what will well, that's what will block your, your stent and kill you in the end you know so look after your stent my friends uh, don't really look after your stent look after yourself you look after yourself you don't need to look after your stent I've been doing the right thing for the last 14 years still here you know I thought I was only going to have like Three, three years at the most when I had my heart attack. I was like, what, 53? I said, God, I hope I reach 60. My dad died at 46. I hope the hell I lived to him 60. I did. 67. Imagine if I lived to 70. i tell you one thing. You see, if I do live to 70 and some bugger buys me, you know, one of those mugs, congratulations, you're 70. I'm going to hit him the biggest kick up the balls. I really am. And excuse me for saying that. I shouldn't really say things like that on YouTube. But I will. 
Who the hell wants to drink a cup that says congratulations you're 70? But then, I suppose maybe you've had a heart attack at 53. What do you think, yeah? Congratulations, you're 70. There's always that side of it, isn't there? As Monty Python once said, Always look on the bright side of life. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. That's another thing. Good attitude. Good mental attitude. We'll see you a long way. So, good mental attitude, exercise, cut down in your food, cut down the portions, lose a lot of weight, plenty of exercise. And you, my friend, might even beat that 40 year record for a stint. I'm 14 years in. Come and beat me, come and join me. Um, hit the wee subscribe button there, please. And uh, I like a like. I like a like. So hit the like button, hit the notification button. That's the one with the bell there. And that'll keep you notified of all my uh, future rants. You know, I like a good rant. You know, I was only supposed to make a five minute video, it's 21 minutes now. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody, nobody else listens to me, you know, so I may as well talk on here. God knows, I might even save somebody's life, you know. There's, or somebody might be reassured watching this. There's maybe somebody's just out of the hospital and they're all scared and thinking they're going to die within the next year. And they say, Did that out bugger, put the belly on it, put the shape of it. Christ, if he can live 14 years, I can live 28 years. And damn right you can. You know, damn right you can. And uh, I know there was a guy left me a message about his dad was watching football matches and he watched one of my own. Well, he's watching this video. You're probably gloating now in England. In England have gotten near the end of the, what do you call it, the quarterfinals. It looks like they're making the semifinals. You're not there yet. You're not there yet. You know, don't take things for granted. It's the same with life. Don't take life for granted. But do look after your life. Because here's a secret between you and me. You only get the one. Take care. All the best. Thank you. Oh, please leave some comments as well, would you? Um, I loved Ray's comment. Ray, your comment was amazing. It uh, really was. Good food for thought. And uh, well done losing one and a half stone and walking all that distance and bringing your blood pressure down. You're an absolute star, mate. And uh, please, as I say, leave comments. It's good to talk to each other. All the best. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.